Welcome to another thrilling edition of Plank of the Week. We've been doing this now for quite some time, quite a few weeks, a couple of months in fact I might say, and I'm delighted to say that I've actually now got the dream team uh, of the Planks panel with me, uh, of Dawn Neeson, who's already done it once before, welcome Dawn, Thank you. and James Max, the Thank presenter you. of course of the Early Breakfast Show on Talk Radio. So I'm going to ask you James to kick us off with your oh. first nomination. Right. Okay. Well, I think my first nomination. I'm, I'm going to have to go for uh, Jolyon Morn. Yes. You see. And now Good here is an Jolien. individual who I'm sure has been nominated in the past. He has. Uh, I am sure he would be delighted to have the limelight. And this is why. Yes. There was a little bit of me that was like, do I really want to give him the credit? Yes. Mm. Because he is a uh, an attention seeking an individual. Odious, odious individual, isn't he? I, I'm I'm not his biggest fan. Yeah. No. Um, I just find that here's someone on one hand is talking about the good law project, mm. wants to bring good laws to the nature of us, the people, yeah. and to have this project that does things within the law that apparently is good for society. But in fact, he's got a very strong agenda. Yeah. And actually, no ability and no filter to work out what is and what is not appropriate. Right. Also, so, for who, example, who, also, who told him that he was the arbiter of what is good for society, by the way? Well, quite. Uh, I think he told himself and or the bank balance yeah. told him that this was a, a, a way to do it. But I think also this is kind of the, the negative side to me of social and digital media, which is when somebody who is perhaps in the news then starts to use social and digital mm. media to build up this profile yeah. that then allows them or encourages them to behave in a way that is no longer appropriate. Mm. So, for example, I, I don't particularly want to know what you're wearing on Boxing Day. I don't want to know that no. you're, you're <laughs> clubbing a, a fox to death. And I, and I certainly don't see why anybody else would, would no. want to know this. The, the fact that he thought that it was appropriate to do that, mm. the fact that he then thought it was appropriate to then to have this sort of like pass, I'm moving away from social and digital media, yeah. and then to come back on. Right. I don't stay away and, and, then, to appear, and then talk about it all on the radio. appear on the ludicrous today program because yes. it now is ludicrous. That was the thing. As if he was some kind of massive victim. Yeah. Right. Yes. Talking about how awful it was to be piled on by people on Twitter, which is what he spent his life doing previously. He was moaning about his mental health. Yeah. But he actually, he actually likened himself to Caroline Flack. Yes. Which his, I thought his, was really low. He was implying low. his life wasn't worth living. I mean, what about the fox? Well, really. I mean, the fox didn't get a choice. But you see, this is, again, I think somebody who has built up their own self to such an extent mm. and they have such a belief in what they're doing that they can't possibly imagine that yeah. people might think differently. Right. I have no problem with people who have a different view from me. Funnily enough, I think it helps to have people yeah. of all Debate opinions. Debate is a good thing. Absolutely. But what's a bad thing is when you begin to think that your position gives you a right mm. to then look down at people because apparently they're not as clever as you yeah. or they're not as uh, able as you or they're not as erudite as you or whatever it may yes. be. And I think for so many reasons, he deserves deserves all the piling on that he got, not because he's wrong, which he is, mm. because of the lack of self-awareness yes. mm, yeah. that right. he has operated, yeah. that he has given yes. social and digital media a bad name and yes. a bad rap. It's a very strong start, Dawn, I have to say. I hope well, you've got something better than I, that. I hope be I have, because I have got the human race being in grave danger <laughs> as part of mine. Oh. And the symptoms are getting worse on a daily basis. Okay. But we're not talking coronavirus. No. We are talking all the idiots that are stockpiling. Panic buying. Panic buying Absolutely stuff right. to survive the global Armageddon zombie apocalypse we are facing. Why is it toilet roll? Well, do you know, what? I've got, I heard an interesting theory the other day, and I don't know whether it's true, but here, here's how the theory goes. Go on, if it's your theory, it's it probably started, true. It started in Australia, right? Because in Australia, apparently all of their toilet paper is made in China. And so they all decided that the China, Chinese toilet paper manufacturers were going to stop manufacturing toilet paper, so they'd better stockpile it all right. before it runs out, right? So that's how it happened in Australia. It then appears to have become some kind of internet myth. So all these stupid people have read on the internet but that all the toilet paper is made in China. But in fact, our toilet paper isn't made in China. Can I, can I just throw something in here? Yeah. I do like to have supplies of what I would describe as bulky goods. Do. Because they are the most inconvenient to purchase from your supermarket. Yes. Yes. So, for example, so, bulk paper. Don't you just get it delivered? Diet colas. No, I, I've never had anything delivered. Really? Yes, because I work on the basis that I shouldn't buy anything that I can't physically carry home. Okay. On the, because otherwise I'd buy too much. So, so you haven't got a car then? Yes, I do have a car. <laughs> I've Are you destroying several. the environment where you're at it? So, no, but, yeah, no but, what, I mean but, is, what? what I mean is you can't carry a car home, but you bought one. There goes your argument. 
Uh, no, from the supermarket. Ooh. I don't buy a su- <laughs> I don't buy a car at a supermarket. I'm just being We're stupid. We're going off the rails Sorry. here already, aren't we? Yeah, go we on. are. Go on. So how many toilet rolls do you currently have indoors? Uh, oh, I've got a lot. How many? How many? I don't know. Hundreds. No. Hundreds. Yeah. No. no. Seriously. Yeah. Fantastic. H- hundreds. Because you've got to have a. You've got to have. But this is no. Not, this is not stockpiling for coronavirus. Sounds like it. This is just no, no, no. This is just stockpiling. But on the basis <laughs> that I go a couple of times a year, where I will take a well, car, you go to the toilet to, a couple times and a year. I will go and get uh, diet diet colas, mm. dog food, yeah. and bog paper because they're the most boring things to buy. Well, if you're yeah. eating the dog food, no wonder you need the loo roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's for the dog. No, but here's the thing, right? I, sh- I, I, by mistake, ordered a load of toilet paper the last time I ordered stuff from Ricardo. Mistake. Right? Mistake. Mistake. Because mistake. Sometimes, you get? sometimes you click. I got one of those things. It's like a nine, you know, nine rolls. Is it the scented peach one? Uh, no, I always get white. Oh, I always right. get white. It's nine, but it's nine. Normally, see. I normally just get four, you know, for the flat in London, because I'm just there on my own. No, you need... You need, I don't, no, no, I always... But so I've actually got low for me. The, have you bought the 18 ones? No. People think that you've got a massive problem no. when you haul out one of those. No. Why, why, why would you do that? You don't need it. In any case, this is a respiratory tract it problem. It is, exactly. It is not affecting your I digestive tract. I do agree tract. with you. Also, without no wishing to, to get too... but I do Also, like to without wishing to get too graphic about it, if you haven't got any toilet paper, it's not the end of the world. You no. Know? There are other things you can do. That, true. Frankly. And, and the other thing is that if we're running out of food, then you're not going to need any loo paper. Well, this is the problem. Yeah. These people. Apparently I they're mean, buying pasta as well. Little pasta. Who knew they were such continentals? I, I did I, go. Yeah. I did go into my <laughs> local supermarket the other day. Literally, I've never seen... You know how over the years you've been conditioned to see stripped shelves? Yes. And it had never happened in yes, any supermarket yeah. that I'd ever been to until the weekend. Mm. And I went and there was no dog food stripped. Yeah. No pasta stripped. No tin tomatoes. What is tin or... tomatoes about? They're horrible. Pasta's horrible. Well, Dry you need, you need oh, tom- no, it's fabulous. Yeah, but you need, you need tin tomatoes to make things. Yes. Yeah. You don't just oh, eat I them. love tin tomatoes. You don't make them on their own. Dried pasta. Yes, yeah, fantastic. It's disgusting. No, 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 that's it's the way it should be. It's glutinous no, 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 mess it's the way it of be. beige stuff. No, 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 it's the way it should be. How many bags of that have you got at home? I'm starting to worry seriously. No, 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 I've only got about three or four packs of that. Right. You haven't got any more room. No, 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 just spaghetti, but you could have different shapes. So I've got spaghetti. I've got some uh, rigatoni. Uh-huh. Have you got any orzos, my latest uh, kick? Yeah, orzo. orzo's really good, nice. actually, yeah. Yeah, it's like and rice. Then, uh, yeah, no, I quite like cooking, you see. I do. But I don't, I'm not using too much of it because it's a bit fat Well, this is so. the thing. Because I quite like cooking, I've got quite a lot of food in the house, which means yeah. that if, for example, I wasn't able to go shopping for about a month, I'd be fine. Yeah, I'm me not too. being funny, boys, but Armageddon could happen. You're going to last a while whether you don't eat for another <laughs> couple of weeks. Sorry. <laughs> Bit it's harsh, true. but a bit true. But very true. But unbelievable. I know. But it, unbelievable. But pasta, I've been here five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but the pasta is from She's Italy. Taking no prisoners. It's got little Italian flags on it. In Italy, everyone's dying. That's so, a good point, actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you need to point. disinfect a, every it single is, little bit of that pasta. It'll be does, it'll be because fine. Because the, coron- the reason that Italy got so badly infected by the coronavirus is because of the fashion business. So it does actually last, this coronavirus, on the surface of yeah. things. Because all of the clothes that are made for Italian manufacturers are made in China. Oh. And all of this stuff, which, that's why do you think they got worse right. uh, coronavirus than everybody else? And, and, and it was, and the point. They it was are, just before Fashion Week as well. And they are an older population as well. They are also an older population. And they are very family friendly, so they all live together. Right. So that's why they've yes, got it worse than we that's have. That's very true. You've been listening to my radio show again, haven't you? No, I wouldn't do that. Are you no, sure? no, I'm never that okay. desperate. Well, all right. Well, listen, um, since you've decided to, to basically just diss everybody on the panel of planks, Sorry. I'm going to get on with it because we're taking too long. We're only on two. We've got to get nine through nine. Oh, of my these, God. You know? Well, he doesn't shut up, does my he? My first one is The Guardian, right? Now, I can't believe this, but actually, I don't think The Guardian has ever appeared on any prior plank list, which is extraordinary to me. Well, it's because we're journalists, we're dissing a newspaper. Yeah, but except, is it a newspaper? You see, I'm not a journalist and I'm happy to diss them. Here is what it now is. The Guardian is not any longer a newspaper. It has ceased to be a newspaper because at this very week it has turned into a sort of lobbying organisation because 300 of their own employees, and that's right, they do employ that many people, have apparently petitioned their own newspaper for which they work as journalists uh, to ban Suzanne Moore, who is one of the more famous she's, and she's a, actually cleverer quite a feminists. Feminist. She's been a great feminist and a great yep. a columnist and a great journalist for the cause of feminism for in her entire career. She's now being sort of deplatformed, or they want to deplatform her, 
because she's basically writing about trans women not really being trans real women. Rights, yeah. And mm. and they hate that. And mm. so now they want her banned. So free speech is out the window basically. And I yeah. know we've had other opportunities to have a go at people who are trying to shut down free it's speech. It's not it's not another for the Guardian, Owen Jones coordinated effort. Well probably, but for the Guardian, which is supposed to be the bastion, I mean I remember it, This is liberal it free was speech. A, it was Guardian. a liberal free speech, yeah. Manchester Guardian, yeah. it was meant to be this great home. But of, isn't it liberal free speech until or unless you diss one of yeah, their exactly. core beliefs? And then and then it yeah, shows. No, when, but hang on, but since when did this whole core belief thing include being in favour of trans rights because that's a relatively new part of this lefty core belief isn't it it is it mm. is I, okay. and I, I, I've, I have another Planck nomination linked to that okay so but I'm, we'll come back to that mm. one but you see how brevity is my friend and I've got round already to, to but, James but this second is linked one. because we've gone from toilet roll to the Guardian yeah seamless well I would use the Guardian if I ran out of toilet roll to well, be yeah well I wouldn't because it was smudge <laughs> <laughs> what's your second nomination <laughs> my second nomination is Jenny Formby. She's General Secretary, She's General of, the Secretary Party, of the right? Labour Party. So I don't know who elects her to, maybe it's the National Executive or whoever it is. I don't know. I don't really know her. I've never met her. I, I've heard her speak a couple of times. I wouldn't be able to She looks tell like the sort of person that wouldn't like you. She probably wouldn't like me. Or me. Uh, or you. Or Dawn. Um, Does she have a moustache? Uh, no. Oh. No. That's very harsh. <laughs> I'm not as far <laughs> I as I know. say anything. No. <laughs> what she does, though, is she seems to have an ability to be able to apply the rules of Labour mm. to people who were within the Blairite faction of the party. Yes. yes. So Alistair Campbell says once... I mean, ultimately, Labour through and through says once, I'm not voting for you because of what you're doing at the moment. Yeah. I'm going to vote Lib Dem. Right. He gets, he gets thrown out, yeah. They they struggled for two whole years and then only ex excluded Ken Livingstone on mm. the basis that they kind of had to. But they weren't sure if it was the right thing to do. But, correct. And it took ages. Yeah. And it took ages. She's been the one who is supposed to be responsible for the dealing of anti-Semitism and she has not dealt with right. it. And it is a... Um, an appalling indictment upon the Labour Party. It is. That that has not been dealt mm. with. And look, OK, so you'll say, I'm not a Labour voter. What do I know? What do I care? A lot of people who I do know who are Labour voters, who are Jewish, uh, as am I, would say they haven't dealt with mm. it and they haven't dealt no. with it effectively and at also, all. And also, there can it's only appalling. be one reason why they haven't dealt with it. Because they don't, they don't want, want to. to. It's they as don't simple as want that. To. Yeah, they don't And, and so this it's week, a... we've, we've got Trevor Phillips, yeah. who... Again, Labour through and through, um, done probably more for race relations and yeah. understanding anything. And I don't care whether he's got some things wrong in the past or whatever it may be. If you're dredging back 20 years mm. in order to, to, to find a reason to get rid of somebody, I mean, by all means, have the conversation and say, look, I hope your views have changed or, you know, we need to have a conversation. Yeah. Or, by the way, would you mind putting out an article just to yeah. talk about it, yeah. just to correct the wrongs? That's how you deal with it. That's how you mm. Because if I go back into my past, I am sure that all of us had very different views about things that today, mm. because of how we've moved on and we've learned, society is a very different place. And yeah. so it should be. And I find this really unpleasant, mm. what's going on well, within the Labour Party. Well, back for years to find stuff Trevor Phillips has said. I mean, we're talking about you know, 20 years. Yeah, we're talking about And if you are doing something important. like that, then you've basically targeted someone and said, right, yeah, let's exactly. go Exactly, you've some done that, yes, yeah. absolutely. Because, because otherwise, how else would that happen? Because well, he quite. was talking about anti-Semitism in the Labour Party that is happening literally a couple of weeks ago, calling that out, and was that's why they've Was he not working as some part of an investigation into it as well? So that, you know, he was now been tainted by the Labour Party as a sort of quizzling. Yeah. And a guy who's from the inside, you know, know sort of turning them from the outside now yes and there are a whole load of reasons why I just think it, it there are clearly some very nasty factions of that party yeah and I think she is one of the fulcrums if yes. you like if mm. that is a word yes and they've got an opportunity to change everything if they put the but right person in charge to. but I don't see but that they happening they don't appear to be doing no. that do they no I really don't I see mean that. they do appear to be doing everything possible to make themselves utterly unelectable yeah which, which is great in some respects is a good thing but <laughs> well it is I mean I think I would be right in saying that almost every single week that we've done Planks of the Week the Labour Party appear in one form or another either one of the leadership candidates all of the leadership all candidates all of them that's the a problem party. I mean all of them and now you've got the I mean isn't it interesting that none of the three leadership candidates were prepared to answer about Trevor, no. Trevor Phillips no. and to talk about no. No. him, even to say either I agree with it or I disagree mm. with it. If you are leader of that party, you've got to have a view, haven't yes. you? Well, and we're, we're three weeks away from one of them being a leader and Keir Starmer just would not even answer no. the question, wouldn't even go there. No, You haven't got an opinion on that and it's so important to yeah. your party. Exactly.
Who's your second one? Well, which brings us very neatly on, yes. it's flowing very seamlessly, is Lisa Nandy. Oh, yes. One oh. of the other, I'm sorry, I really want to, <laughs> I really want to like Lisa. Yes, I'd like she, to like her. She's young, she's feisty, she's, she's independent, quite funny. she's quite funny, and most of the time she says the right thing, however just recently she hasn't been. Uh, she got turned over pretty badly by Piers Morgan, She didn't was she? on um, Piers Morgan, uh, well, Good Morning Britain this morning with Piers Morgan, and they were asking her about transgender again. Yeah. She going got monstered. back to that. Right. And she was absolutely torn apart. I mean, but really. But of her own she volition. Won't, she won't answer the question. I mean, she's literally, and this is, as a woman, going all feminist here, she's thrown women under the bus by yeah. signing this transgender hate crime yeah. declaration. What's the obsession with all but, this? I, I just I, don't, I don't get know, it. It's not important. No. You want to win back your northern working class voters. They are not sitting... Mm up in the pubs in Middlesbrough or, or Doncaster or anywhere like that talking about trans no. rights. Well, Richard Bergen was on uh, Plank's list last week because he said the way to get back the, uh, the grassroots of Labour Party in the north of England was to start twinning the towns with towns in Kashmir and Palestine. Yeah, of course it is, mate. And you what? Good idea. What? You know, they what? have no idea. No, I, well, I, 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 let, <clears> them, <throat> let them continue with these wonderful ideas. But this is, it's just, I mean, it's so wrong, though, because women's rights now, which we've fought for decades to be recognised mm. as equals, in some cases superior, are now being just completely trashed mm. by other women. Yeah. It's like, you know, you could wake up tomorrow morning, fancy being a woman, yeah. come into my gym changing room, yeah. and Lisa would think that's fine well, because you're identifying as a woman. I was talking to Andre Walker about this the other, the other week because he was saying about Labour Party getting all these all, all women shortlist again. He said, but it's not a problem because you can just walk just into identify. the room and say, I'm a yeah. woman as well. Yeah. So I want to be on the all women shortlist. I'm sorry, no. But then, but then also they, they want to have the, the all working class shortlist as well. Oh, is that right? Yes, because they don't like the Liberal no, elite. Oh, well, well, I'm, no. sure that, uh, I'm sure that old uh, Keir Starmer knows a few working class people in Islington, doesn't he, that he can get? I, well, no? We've had this working class debate here. What is working class these days? Exactly. Somebody who has to work. Mm. I can't just Well, stop. there is that, yeah, no. But the other thing with, well, with Lisa... Well, all three of us out there. The, the other thing with Lisa and the transgender issue is the um, athletic row. Yes. It, it's like, the, you know, a man identifying as a woman can go and compete against women in whatever sport. Wrestling. We, wrestling, and, and then and, and weightlifting. And her answer, to this, her answer to this was, well, we must set up a royal commission or something like no. that. Oh, like, for God's sakes. She has got a bit of form for this, I have to say. I don't know whether either of you have seen my interview with Lisa Nandy in the tent of common sense last year. Uh, what was she, she doing sat, in it? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, she obviously made a wrong turning. Yeah. She sat down <laughs> and basically said to me that there was, no, there was no deal on the table. And I said, so you're telling me that the deal that Theresa May brought back to the House of Commons, which has been voted down three times, is not a deal? And she said, no, it's definitely not a deal. But what she was trying to get at was the fact that it was a kind of a withdrawal arrangement agreement, which had to then become a deal later on. But at one point in the conversation, and I just said to her, you know, you're just re you're trying to rewrite history here. She looked at me and she said, I think you're just being difficult now. And uh, to which the mother of my children said, you should try living with him. <laughs> <laughs> this, this morning with Piers, God love him. She actually said, I think you should apologise. And it's like, no. For what? Just, I, exactly, I for asking say, sensible questions. I yeah. was watching the interview. I was hooting and howling. It was just... It was, Absolutely brilliant. It's a right. car crash. But any of them, every time they do um, interviews, they, it's a car crash. Yeah. They really, I mean, Rebecca I don't know why Long they Bailey. go on. Did you see her I interview? I did. I, don't, oh know why, I don't know why they go on. Well, it's time for me to do my second nomination. And it's a guy called Mark Bass. Now, you may not have heard of Mark Bass, but he's the guy who is the chairman of the Naturist Society, um, mm. who was interviewed uh, around about a few days ago in, on various places, including Julie Hartley Brewer's show on Talk Radio. Uh, he's the guy who thinks that basically naturism should be treated like a religion and that should be respected in the same way as a religion so that you should, in fact, not be able to commit a hate crime against any naturists. And so if anybody's walking around naked around you because they're naturists, they should be allowed to do it. And as Julia Hartley Brewer quite rightly pointed out, she said, well, there are many people that might need protecting. For example, um, you know, gay people should be protected and should have the right to be gay and to be married like uh, straight people because, you know, they're gay. They, that, that's something that they are. But you don't have to be a naturist. You can actually put something on mm. rather than offending everybody yes. by walking around with your todger out, you know. And it was so the guy was just talking absolute rubbish. And then he actually said, and this is why he gets on the planks list, he actually said that being naked was not part of the core belief system of any naturist. Well, 
so What's apparently uh, right. they don't actually believe in being naked. It's just part of a, a sort of sense of freedom that they like to feel. Right. right. And I don't know about you, but whenever I've encountered, I don't encountered... want to say, oh, listen, there's enough. There's enough on display in the supermarket. Well, whenever whenever I've occasionally stumbled upon a naked beach, which hasn't been very often, <laughs> I've almost always had young children with me and sort of had to try and explain to them why those people over there are not wearing any clothes, and it's always highly embarrassing. And I can't imagine why anybody would want to do it. And the other thing is, why do they always want to play tennis? Naked. Yeah, or, 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 or cycling. Yeah, cycling. What is, what is that all about? Cycling. How, I mean, you do wear clothes for practical reasons. Yeah, yes. exactly right. Yeah, cycling. So I'm afraid naturism, uh, yeah, you'll be I, pleased I, I, to know, is not for me. I have got confession, though, to make. I have actually been swimming naked in the sea, which is lovely. Swimming naked is great. I've it's swum really, naked in the swimming exactly. pool. That has happened. And it, listen, every, but that's uh, not, know, everyone's done that. Everyone's everyone's that's a that's nice fine. feeling. That's freedom. Yes. But I wouldn't walk around the local but supermarket. But I don't do it if I'm. I don't do it if I'm in a hotel and a crowded beach with a load of people there. You know, I no. don't mind a bit of a midnight swim in the very nice villa that I've rented for the yes, summer. Yes, exactly. You yeah. know, yes, that's fine. Yes. You know, in fact, I get told off for doing it even by, you know, the people that are in my own family. Well, quite. But I just quite like doing it. But, I mean, I don't want to parade around in front of everybody else. No, 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 no. please don't, no. And no, then, in fact, no, nobody no. wants me to do that. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no. no one wants no, you to no, do I'm, that. I'm going to sign that petition right now, thank you. Okay, mm. right. So, number three. I was really annoyed by Rory Stewart. Mm. He seems to have a lack of connection with reality. Is he just so, trying to be weird, do you think, or is he really I think weird? he's just naturally weird. I think yeah. he's just naturally weird. Right. And fine, I don't mind weird, be, be weird. What I mind is when you are pushing forward an agenda, which is n not just weird, it's stupid. Yeah. So he's suggesting that we should close down the tubes and the buses uh, and schools now. Yes. Because that's how you uh, deal with coronavirus. Setting aside any discussion about whether or not that's what we should be doing. Mm. Setting aside any damage that you'll do to the economy mm. as a result of yeah. doing that, and whether the damage to the economy would actually be worse than um, you know, the, well, the one the way or two heading, that you may save, which you probably won't, because the point is that with an illness, mm. if you can do anything to slow it down, that's great. And that's why I'm listening very carefully to certain kinds of advice, the hand washing, things that we can yeah. do, all makes sense. Right. Common sense. Common sense. But when it starts to impinge on people's lives, and in particular do long-term, almost self-harm mm. to the economy, yeah. you have to wonder whether this person is suitable for office. And here he is, running for Mayor of London um, as an independent, and I just think, right, well, you've just consigned yourself to oblivion on, yeah. the, on the basis that yeah. you seem to have little or no attachment to reality. Well, that, uh, that comes hot on the heels of that other ridiculous thing that he suggested, that you should sort of pop into your house and spend the night. And you imagine waking up God, next yeah, to Rory was, Stewart. What was that about? That no, was that weird. Was weird. Yeah, I, that oh, was weird. Let me come and sleep in your house. Yeah. Well, yeah no, no, thank why? you. Why? No. Why? why would you want to do that? I presume I mean, he's gone off go that idea the since the... Fine, I presume he's, done, he's gone off that idea since the coronavirus. He thing. hasn't mentioned it since, no. has he? Unless no. he brings a loo roll, maybe. Maybe. That's maybe maybe he does. I don't know. He's a very odd guy, there's no doubt. He is, but then on the other hand, he did go sort of like full on... Uh, anti-Brexit, whatever it is, mm. thing, and then that he, he got attention for himself. He did. And then I think people realised uh, you are a plank, yeah. and he's extended that. Yeah, so well done. absolutely right. Well mm. done, Rory. Well That's done, a good Rory. One. Mm. Yours have been very good, and your third one, Dawn. Oh, and mine aren't. No, I didn't say I that. Right, I've you got see? it with the looking so immediately, you see immediately you you've jumped to the wrong conclusion. I'm waiting to see what your third one is. Yeah. It is going, I am going... Royal. Royal. Oh, oh we yes. like it a bit. She's playing, she's like playing the Trump, Trump card. The Trump oh, yeah, card. it is. Well, yes. I mean, it's 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 fairly obvious. Yeah. It's Prince Andrew. Yeah. Uh, despite his promises in that infamous TV interview oh, yes. that he would um, help the American law forces in whatever way they needed, he is now actually yes. having nothing to do with no. them. And going in fact, they're now of accusing way, him of actually blocking, blocking them from getting any blocking information. Blocking them. Right? He's actually hired two top lawyers to our um, extradition lawyers, mm. to, to specialise in... And now in, is there not a question here? mark, because there was a piece written a few weeks ago, is there now not a question mark about the famous Pizza Express visit? Yeah, well, uh, it didn't... Well, which, yeah. which one of his uh, protection guys says yeah. he wasn't there. He, but he, you see, my, my, my question mark over that is that he said that he was at a birthday party. Mm. Now, I have been to Tramp, uh, the nightclub. Yeah. Well, you don't go there till 11.30, 12 o'clock. No. No, no one's going to no. be... Uh, no one's going to be at a, a children's birthday party until then, so you can no. still go to the children's birthday so he party. Could have done both. And then he could have done yeah. both. Who knows? Right. Yeah. Well, also, knows? the rubbish about him not sweating was clearly rubbish. It's, yeah. right? I mean, that was that, that, that was, was pathetic, was, wasn't it? That, it was so awful. Yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> but you see, that comes but from... But that was so bad, you almost thought, maybe that's real, because no one would make that up. Why would surely. you make that up? Why would you make that Because it's just so bonkers. It is so bonkers and so ridiculous. Yeah. But I, I don't know. The thing that really concerns me, though, is 
they never seem to realize that if you say you are moving away from the institution, you really have to mm. step back. Yeah. And this yeah. turning up at events, turning up. up at things and right. keep showing up and right. keep doing things, it's not acceptable. And no. I think it's partly because, of course, the Queen feels bad about it or whatever. And, and this is the difficulty when you have family and, mm. um, you know, roles and responsibilities within a family. Mm. That, also, you know, without, you can't... without putting too fine a point on it, I mean, I don't actually think that he's a paedophile, right? I don't believe that. I this... do think that he hung out with the wrong people. Yes. I do but he think always hangs judgment... out with the wrong people. Yes. Because I think yes. this is what happens in royal circles. Yeah. If you are just one step removed from the line, yeah. and the line means that you have all mm. the privileges, all the money, all the connections, yeah. then you will do everything you possibly can. It's history repeating itself. Have a look at the crown. It, it says it very clearly. This is what happens when you're just outside that mm. sort of focus. You want the limelight. You want the treatment that you're getting. Mm. And and also, you never quite have enough money yeah. in your life. This, is, your this is his problem. He's hung around with yes. very, very rich people who think they can do whatever they want and get away with well, it. Well, this is the Harry and Meghan problem, do. isn't it? Because exactly. for them, having 30 million quid isn't enough. Yeah. They're yes, pretty sure and they're therefore need more they money. will hang up with people who yeah. have way more. And the thing is that the people who have way more, who can't deal with the, the, the line because they don't pass the sniff yeah, test, yeah. then throw their money and their wealth at the ones yeah. that they can yeah. Yeah. get. Right. And that's what happens. And the, it's just repeating itself. The, and, and he's got himself into trouble. The thing is with Prince Andrew, if he did go and help them out with their inquiries, if he did talk yeah. to them, I think he could make an awful lot of this go away. I think he could. Think he could and that's what I mean. I think most people... But I think the trouble is, the truth of the matter is that it will lead to people finding out a little bit more exactly. about what he I was mean, doing. Now, I don't think he was having sex with 12-year-olds. No. And but this he is, might well have been having sex with 17-year-olds. Well, this is a problem. Which is a pretty of, awful. A lot of men in this country are thinking, right, OK, well, the age of consent in this country is 16. All right, it's a bit gamey, a 40-year-old bloke having sex with a 17-year-old, yeah. but it's not illegal. Right. So a lot of people will be going, well, OK, yeah, not right, but, you know. But also illegal. after that it's interview. It's not a paedophile in that sense. However. But after that interview, you say that it would be a good idea for him to go and speak. We saw well, what he considers to be good judgment. Well, this is this yes. is the other issue with the royal family. Most of them are terminally stupid. They really are. He also said that he would go and speak to the authorities uh, if his legal advisers thought it would be appropriate, right? So we can only assume so that his legal they've advisors advised him have not now to. said to him, actually, yeah, you might not have to do that. Yeah. I think they've seen yeah. the interview and yeah. they said it's not appropriate. Yeah, no, it's no, not no, a good you're, idea. You're we way don't, too I mean, stupid. Emily Maitlis <laughs> is one thing, but sitting down in front of the US attorney yeah, and no, the FBI, just, they might actually no. get even more out yeah. of you, your plank. He just so needs he's to a disappear. Very good, uh, yeah, he's a very yeah. good plank. Thank My you. final plank is a man who has also appeared on this before, A.C. Grayling. Now, I'm not really very sure where A.C. Grayling came from. He's meant to be some kind of, you know, professor stroke philosopher. He's got a new book out at the moment, but he has continued to do this whole kind of Brexit derangement syndrome. Now, ever since January the 31st, when we've actually left the European Union, mm. I don't know whether he's noticed that, but he keeps putting out these relentless tweets. He's been doing the rounds on TV uh, news stations, being interviewed. He calls Boris Johnson a disreputable character, a liar, you know, uh, useless. He calls him incompetent. I mean, this is a bloke who literally is mad. He's now lost the plot to such an extent that he cannot actually do anything other than rejoin the European Union. It's all he wants to do. He wants to. He wants well, us who to is stop. He? Well, he's just this kind of academic who has written a few books and I think has some notoriety as a result of that. I've never written it. I've read any of his books. I don't even know what he really writes about. No. But he's a kind of, he's one of these sort of what you might call part of the sort of chattering classes. Uh -huh. But do you think though that we whether it's in the media, feed or have fed this frenzy because mm. we always have to find an alternate yep. voice. Yep. So we then find the most eloquent or annoying alternate voice right. and we just stick them on and we stick them on again and again and again yep. until, until they become mainstream. Because you're getting reaction, but, but, aren't but you? I don't, I, think, I don't think we made him mainstream. It's a bit like Philip Pullman, you know, the guy who writes his dark materials, you know, who's on the face of it, you would think is a reasonably intelligent man. He's a very talented writer. He's made fortunes writing these books in Britain. Um, but this is a guy who comes out now and is so uh, anti-Brexit uh, that he calls Britain foul, he calls it racist, he talks about how this country has gone to the dogs, that, you know, uh, the country that he lives in. And you just think to yourself, he's, this guy's worth about 30 million quid. He's done pretty well out of this country. And yet, because of Brexit, he can't leave it alone. He just can't stop insulting absolutely anyone mm. who wanted to leave the EU. Mm. It's bizarre. Mm. And it's like Hugh Grant and all these people who have, who have oh. got pretty decent careers. Uh, they've managed to make quite a lot of money. But they're just sort of bitter about everything. Doing down this country, and that's like going back to the royals with Harry and Meghan. Yeah. They're, they're implying that we're all hateful racists, and right. we, and we're we, not. we it's don't also, get what it's they're also about. Looking at, it's care. looking away from their own behaviours. Yes. Yes. Very often, 
have been the source of, shall we say... Certainly in Hugh Grant's case. Well, quite. So oh, you, you look at their behaviours and then and then suddenly it's down to everybody else yes. that, you know, their life has the been... The moral arbiters you know, of our well, society. Quite. Because they're so arrogant, aren't they? Mm. They're always in the right and we're always wrong. And we're yeah. really thick. I know. We it's don't awful. understand it. It's awful. Well, we've got nine very good planks there. Uh, and we're running late, so I think we need to cut them down immediately. Um, so why don't you tell us who your three are and we'll just... Reckon, we'll, we'll so, so my three are... Uh, Jolly and Morn, QC. Yeah. Uh, then we've got Jenny Formby and we've got Rory Stewart. OK. Well, I think the best of those has got to be Jolly and Morn. So I'm going to nominate Jolly and Morn from you. OK. Um, and Dawn, if you'd like yeah. to nominate one of mine. Right. And then and James can nominate one of yours. OK. So Dawn. mine are AC Grayling, yeah. The Guardian and that bloke from the Naturist Society, whose name I think is Mark I, Bass. I actually, because I, I, I don't want to do this because it's a newspaper and I've worked in a newspaper for 30 years, but I'm going to go with The Guardian. That's going well then. Yeah. So Sorry. The Guardian and Julian Moore so far yes. now for the third entry. It's one of yours, which James will pick. So yours... I had Lisa Nandy. Yes. I had Stockpiling Numpties. Yes. And I had Prince Andrew. <laughs> They're all great this week. They are great. They're ones. good, aren't they? Really they? Are. So good at this. Um, Super good. good. I think we're going to go Prince Andrew. I know you go Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew. Mm. Well, listen, this is now getting even tougher because we're now in the final process. So we've got Prince Andrew. Oh, blimey. We've got The Guardian and Jolien Morb. Now, this is normally where I say, well, you can look at what's going on this week and maybe get rid of one of those because they could be in it another week. It's been such a strong field mm. that I wonder whether you would want to have a thing rather than a person. I think yes. you want a person this week. Yes. Yeah, OK. And also, yeah, right, it's rather enough. a delicious contest between Prince Andrew and Jolien Morb, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's hard to we, pick, We need a it? fox to have the final say on this one, don't we? <laughs> well, funny enough, they both kill them. Fox exactly. They both they kill them. Actually, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. 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 So, so there's so, definitely a foxy theme yeah. going on. Yeah. So, I mean, if I was to say to you, uh, do Ooh. you want to vote for Jolien Morm? Please raise your hand. That's what I'm going to do. That's two. Is it going to be no, unanimous? No, I know. I'm Prince going, Andrew. I, I'm sticking with Prince Andrew. Because the two of us have voted for Julian Warm. He's the winner. I think that's sexist claptrap. Of course. <laughs> I, I, I think you are picking on the female here just because you are too white, male, pal, style. It's true. All of those things we're, apply. We're kicking, so, on, we're kicking on Prince whoops. Andrew. He's, he's a bloke. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's my blow, my choice, so yeah, I'm allowed to say that. She's see. not a very good loser, is she? No. She's I'm really not. a bad loser. Bad she doesn't loser. like losing. She doesn't like bad it. But no, anyway, I listen, don't. thank you both for coming. Uh, that means Jolien Morm is the plank of the week. Uh, James Max, Dawn Neeson, we'll be back next week with more plankery. <laughs>